Welcome all Diablo fans to this week's Diablo Fighting Championship episode. Only three weeks remain until we cut to an epic showdown between the top duelers of this season. This week we saw some nasty showdowns and even some surprising upsets. I think you're gonna like what we got. Who will solidify their spot among the top duelers to win that epic Omen Gaming laptop? Stay tuned and find out. Let's dive in to this week's episode of the DFC. Round one of episode five of the DFC HLD night. Well, let's do this. Round one, here we go. All right, so we are looking at Hand of Ares. We're looking at this from his perspective. And Hand of Ares has a very interesting build. I absolutely love this build right here. This is this is a an Aura Din that he has. We've seen this guy in the DFC before. It's a very vicious build. Uh, he's, you know, he's what I like about his play style with this is he's very aggressive. Look at this. He is doing some serious damage to Lilith. Oh, and Lilith is doing some serious damage to him. Oh my gosh. Oh, close quarters combat. Look at this. These guys are just back and forth. Yeah, so what I was saying is I love about, you know, what I love about Hippo's build here is it's very aggressive. And there it is. Gets round one with the Oradin. Yeah, he's very aggressive. He has many different angles of attack, which is really cool. Not only does he have these auras, which are constantly pulsing at your opponent, but he's got that conviction fist of heavens that he will run you down with. And from there, he also has a very, very vicious charge, man. We have seen this guy in the DFC before, and he is one of my favorite characters to watch. This is such a cool build. All right, these guys are ready. Looks like Lilith switched up some gear. He's making some alterations to his build here. This will be this will be interesting. He's probably stacking up more res to try to fight back against this Oridin. A little bit grainy on this side over here. No worries. We get to see the general gist of what's going on. If it keeps up, we can actually switch to uh, to Doom's point of view too. But it's, it's so fun seeing this from uh, from the Oridin's perspective. Because a lot of times, if you go to pub games and you see an Oridin, oh, big hit from a blizzard right there. But a lot of times, if you go to a pub game and you watch an Oridin, they'll just charge around. They won't even try to engage. You know what I mean? And it's, it's very discouraging. But this guy, Hippo, is chasing you down always. You, you have to run away from this guy. And Lilith, with some very nicely placed blizzards... That's the thing with Lilith. You know, Doom has such good aim on this character. Look at that, man. Just Ice Blast right in the right direction. Nice charge around the Blizzard there from, uh, from Hippo. I like his strategy of FOH here too. Because Doom is very hard to catch. So he's using that FOH for just an auto target. Oh, very close. Very close. And here we go, round three. So it looks like the gear changes that Lilith made there did make us a little bit of a difference. It gave him that survivability that he needed for this duel. Yeah, and it looks like Hippo is is really being mindful of uh, of Lilith's aim. Really respecting that aim. Trying to go in at these weird angles. Nice hits, nice hits. And good pulses of damage. It looks like it's doing consistent damage. And Doom is trying to stay out of the way of those auras. He's taking so much damage from those auras. At least that's what it looks like. I, it looks like. I got a slight glimpse of the life total there. And it looks like even from afar, he is doing some damage. Yeah, he's, he's taking that life total down. But all it takes, oh man, all it takes is a couple of hits from either Ice Blast or Blizzard. 
And it is good night. And here we go. Round four. Yeah, Stax was late as well. We could we could sneak you guys in. Oh, and look at this. Hippo is really keeping the distance here. Yeah, I like that. Really just kind of picking his shots. Very nicely picked shot there. Oh, man. Nice hits. He needs to be patient here. He doesn't want to get overzealous and chase Lilith down because that's how you're going to run into those blizzards just like that. He's got some very good damage on Lilith right now. He did have the upper hand until he got clocked by that blizzard. Now he just wants to be very careful, really pick his shots like he was doing in the first part of this duel. And I think that could get him there. But again, with Lilith, his aim is so good. His aim is so good. You never really know. He, he seems to know the angle you're going to be coming in at far before you do. Oh, wow. What a comeback. Oh, <laughs> holy hell. All right, let me switch. Uh, let me switch to Doombringer's view if he's still uh, if he's still streaming. Looks like he he cut off his stream. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of graininess from Hippo's side here. All right, if both players are ready, we're gonna go into round five from this very very close duel. It is currently two two. These guys are ready for the official round five. This could be over very quickly with a couple of these well placed blizzards from doom I'm, I'm actually very happy to see this from his angle too we had to switch out because of the graininess uh you know from from hippo's angle it was getting a little grainy and hard to see but it's it's like i said also just very good to see this from doombringer's standpoint I, i'm curious to see how much he's getting damaged by these auras and from where Oh, very nice. Yeah, it looks like they both have to get in really close. A nice stomp. Oh my gosh, this could be over. Nice escape from Doom. I think Doom Telly stomped there with the intention of finishing. He had a very nicely placed blizzard, and he tried to capitalize on it in Telly Stomp. But uh, I'm telling you, Hand of Ares, aka Hippo, he was ready. He was ready. He did not charge away. He stayed right in the pocket. That was an interesting exchange. Both players took a lot of damage there. Yeah, and I think this is going to turn into a distance battle. Oh, and some nice FOHs, and it is all over! On this Sork, he's got a very nice setup. He looks like he's got a max block setup. Paid off here. Yeah, very nice. He put on a res ring here, too, which makes a lot of sense. He needs that big res boost. Because it's just like every element coming at you, man. You got lightning, fire, big lightning damage from FOH. And of course, like conviction, man. Like that just, ugh, that is rough. Hard to, hard to battle against. Very nice stuff on this Sorceress, man. Best Sorceress, best cold Sork on East right here. Got a nice Hand of Justice caddy. With uh, conviction and Fist of Heavens there. That's I love that weapon, man. Very good charge damage on it, too. Oof, 4.5k charge damage. Jesus. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, that's that's vicious enough right there. It just gives you a whole nother attack you have to worry about. Yeah, using the Kira's Guardian for Cannot Be Frozen and a big boost to Cold Res. I do like that. He's got the Dragon. That's what's giving him those Holy Fire Auras. His weapon, that armor. He also has another one on his shield. Six stat amulet right here. Stat, res, life, two pally skills. GG. That's just nasty. Dragon shield. Sandstorm trek boots. Nice stat ring with life and AR for that charge. Very good. Sick dungos. 
perfect raven. And perfect blood fists. 2020 pally torch. Man, imagine how vicious that would be with a pre patch pally torch charging and casting like hellfire. Oof. Oof. Be nasty. Got a nice Annie. He's got some nice small charms. <laughs> he says, You telling me? Anyone got a donated pre patch torch? <laughs> Yeah, very nice. I like those uh, life res charms here, too. Very, very nice. And Pally Combat Skillers. GG. And here we go. It's Cooley versus Sure I'm Sure. Let's do it. Got stuck. GG. Here we go, round two. Oh, nice poison jab. information in, in round one and we used it to our advantage to take round two all right here we go Tagged me. Tagged me, man. <laughs> that poison jab did some work. victory <laughs> that's it 
Doom, I appreciate the uh, appreciate the reminder there. That is a very good strategy with Bone Wall. All right, here we go, round five. Oh man, tagged. Wow, that poison jab is what did it. So for this duel to kick my ass, sure I'm sure was rocking. Faith Diamond Bow. Some very nice 220, 15 strength knockback gloves with replenished life three. Sick. He's got some uh, war travelers for the min and max damage. Nice stat ring with AR life resistance. Poison length reduced. Pretty good against the hybrid necro. He's got uh, Fort of Chains. And look at this nasty... Look at this nasty Zon diadem. Oh, oof. Damn. Open wounds belt too. Cat's eye for the faster run walk in 20 IAS. Three 2020s and three 320s. Wow. This guy's got some upgrades. This guy's got some serious upgrades. Look at this helm. Is there a better helm against the hybrid poison necro? I was wondering why my, my Poison Nova didn't do shit round one. I was like, count that out. We're not using Poison Nova. He's prepared. Look at this helm. The helm, the ring. Whew. That is nasty. Good helm. I love that thing, man. That's just, that's good in and of itself. That's probably one of the best Zahn diadems I've ever seen. He says, I duel against Priest. Got to be prepared. Yeah, Priest has a, a pretty nasty Poison Jab, too. God, that's awesome. Good duels, man. That was sick. In case anybody was wondering what I was using for the first duel, I was actually using my white wand with lower res so I could hit him with poison nova. Round one, I noticed that really didn't pay off. It didn't do a lot of damage, and it was hard to hit him with the poison nova. So I switched to Hodo, and that would allow me to get max cast and max block. Someone actually asked me on YouTube once, what the situation was where I would want max cast and max block. This is it. This is the situation. All right. We're going to see. We're going to see how the uh, Necro versus Assassin matchup goes under these new rules. In case you guys missed them, mana pools are no longer a thing in DFC. So, that's going to force both players to be very conservative and pick their shots. Oh, very nicely done here. Looks like Maddie is using teeth. That is very good against an assassin. He's typing no pickup as he's teleporting around. No pickup is a uh, is a nice little it's a nice little feature of the game to use in PvP. Just makes it so you don't accidentally click on any of the items on the ground. It's it's super important because that can actually really screw up your mojo. Ooh, nice escape there from Maddie. So what we're seeing here from Max is he's a hybrid. He's got uh, he's got whirlwind at his disposal and he's got. Uh, traps. So Medi has to be very careful on his approach. You see him using teeth here a lot. It's it's a little easier on the mana, and it's still a wide enough range to take out that Shadow Master and also pose threatening damage to the assassin. The assassin's weapon block is so annoying. It can block just about any attack in the game. So just having constant teeth going everywhere really procs that. Uh, you know, that weapon block and just kind of, it's just constant little damage here and there. 
that uh, it's almost guaranteed to get in if you're, you know, if you're angling it right. Oh, very nicely done there. Looks like uh, Maddie's getting some very nice ping damage in, but a big hit from Max. Yeah, and he is he has cut Maddie open too. You can see his life total slowly dripping down. He got that open wounds going and a very nice comeback strategy there to get out of that. You saw Maddie teleport into his own bone spirits. That right there will will uh, really punish Max for trying to follow him with a whirlwind, just like he's doing right now. That was very well timed. Didn't didn't proc open wounds that time by the looks though. So Maddie is Maddie's free from the open wounds, which is really good. Because that can be super annoying. But he's cut. he got cut open there. Teleported right into a whirlwind. He's in a lot of trouble here. Oh! The teeth gets there! Good aim! Good aim! We were just talking about those teeth. It's a really good strategy against the Sin. He did, a, he did an amazing job there. Alright, looks like Maddie's ready. Max is ready. Here we go for round two. Let's see if Max is going to adapt his strategy here. This was a this was a very close round one. Every duel tonight has been extremely close. <laughs> False start. False start. What would it really be a DFC event if someone didn't if if someone didn't forget to hostile their opponent <laughs> before a duel? That's okay. Quickly resuming round two. I swear that happens every event. Every event, it has to happen at least once. Duel looks pretty intense. <laughs> Nobody's hostile. Ooh, nice lock there and good trap set up from Max. And Maddie did a very good job of escaping and taking minimal damage. Setting himself up very nicely. I like the use of Bone Prison there, too. It, you know, even though, uh, even though the Assassin can teleport, a well-timed Bone Prison that catches your opponent off guard, especially when you have a ton of spirits coming at him, really just locks him in place for all of those spirits you fired ahead of time. Oh, and he gets clipped with that open wounds. Maddie is cut open. Oh, and it looks like looks like Max was whirlwind locked there. He he actually got out of that rather unscathed. That could have been a lot worse. Looks like he might be whirlwind locked again. But now he's off screen, so that will break the whirlwind lock. Yeah, it looks like he might have been. Very nicely aimed teeth there from Maddie. And a good CT cast from Max. Yeah, this is back and forth, man. Two very skilled opponents. Oh, it's a good point, too, back to Diablo. The uh, the Bone Prison can actually eat up the Whirlwind damage. Because they can... Yeah, Whirlwind can only hit so many things now. Ever since it was patched, it can only hit so many things per second. So if it hits the Bone Prison, it doesn't hit the player. So it's a, it's a very good, very good uh, observation there. Oh, nicely done from Max. Catches him in that mind blast. Gets some kicks in there. Damn. Round three. So we just saw the sheer power of the stomp from Max. And he gets in close again with some more stomps, some whirlwinds. He's cut Maddie open. What an amazing, amazing assassin. Very nicely done there from Maddie. He's trying to, he's really trying to uh, prey on the aggression of Max here. He's trying to lure him into some bone spirits. Preying on that aggression. He's doing a, he's doing a, a good job of, you know, making Max back off with that strategy too. If by the very least it backs him off. Narrowly escaping some uh, some really good damage there from Max too. And some beautiful CT casting from Maddie. That's another thing. That's some next level Necromancer stuff right there is that CT casting. But he gets clipped with a whirlwind. Looks like he gets cut open pretty badly. 
Oh, man, and it looks like Max is whirlwind locked or close to it. Yep, he seemed to, he, he broke it when uh, when Maddie teleported off his screen there. That broke the lock, but Maddie gets put in a, a tough, tight spot here. And it looks like Max is going in for the finish. Maddie trying to survive, and he can't do it. Too much pressure from Max. That was nuts. <laughs> All right, here we go. Round four. So it's currently 2-1 in Max's favor. We see a different strategy here right away from Maddie. He's really getting those that chain of bone spirits going. It looks like he might have connected there on Max. Max teleported away. He recognized he was in trouble from those bone spirits. Not sure how many hit them. It's always hard to tell with that, uh, with that weapon block because you never know. Could have been a lot. Absolutely none hit. That's so nasty. Weapon block OP. Weapon block OP. Please nerf. Yeah, that is that's nasty. Weapon block is so useful, man. I mean, granted, you can only get to like mid 60s for block reasonably. You know what I mean? Reasonably in PvP, but the fact that you can block any attack in the game, like a bone spirit, a bone spear, a, a hammer, a blizzard, you can block all of that stuff, man. Like you can't you can't block that with regular max block. Just just nasty. Oh, good hits from Maddie. He got a very nice bone spear in there. And it looks like Max is not letting him get away to recast his bone armor, keeping that pressure on him and uh, cuts him open with some open wounds as he's trying to get away. But uh, Maddie does manage to escape. Ooh, man, what a close, close quarters combat duel there from both players. Both players are very low on life. Looks like uh, well, it looks like Maddie's about half life, and Max is, yeah, probably at less than a quarter now. He took a lot of damage from being in, from trying to get whirlwind damage in close to that bone prison, and that's what Back to Diablo was talking about. Oh, but he gets he makes up for it there, gets some really nice hits in, and cuts Maddie open with that open wounds, and Maddie trying to do some CT tallying and keep the distance. And make Max run into these teeth. I think that's a good strategy. He can't get too close at this point. He's He's been cut open. He's, you know, one trap hit away. One whirlwind. One kick. You know, a couple of mind blasts. If they can, you know, if he can break that bone armor. It's, oh, this is rough. This is so close. But he does it. Never count Maddie out. Never count Maddie out. All right, it looks like Maddie is battle order in here. And here we go. Round five, fifth and final round. Who will come out on top? So I think we're going to see Maddie start using those teeth a little more early on. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we did. Because that was, that seemed to really be a big, uh, you know, a, a finisher in that last duel i mean not only a finisher but it's just a source of that constant damage and you can get so many out that cover such a large radius that it really it's a good counter to that weapon block he's going to be careful not to get caught in those mind blasts and some nice ct tellying there or uh some nice uh, chain locking from max that was beautifully done Oh, very nice. So what we're seeing here is Maddie is using that mana. The worst, the worst thing in a five-round match here is dying with a bunch of mana in your in your belt. Use it. Maddie is really using it here, trying to get in some big damage early. Very nice aim with that spear, narrowly avoided there by Max. Max tried to cut an angle there. Try, you know, that, that's some high level kicks in stuff right there. Tried to cut an angle, trying to guess the, the direction that Maddie would go, trying to weapon swap out. And look at this. Speaking of angles and speaking of pressure, look at this. Keeping that pressure on. Maddie is cut open and very low on life. Max 
has a very healthy life total. Last I checked, it's hard to tell with a with a sin. You never really know how much damage they've taken, especially in a duel like this. A lot of this is going to take place just off your opponent's screen. Yeah, and he's going to that teeth strategy. I really like that, but he's in. He was oh narrowly avoiding death. Ooh. Nice teeth, nice teeth. Slowly replenishing some life back, but I mean, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. One clip from that whirlwind, one click from a kick, and it could be over. Oh my gosh, nice catch there. Maddie is at one life. But Maddie just did some significant damage to Max and has really worked him down. Oh, and it is all over. What a freaking duel. <laughs> oh, man. So we're seeing Maddie with a lower res wand here. A lower res white wand. He's got a very nice neck circlet, a 220 neck amulet with poison length reduced by 75. Clutch call in this matchup. Enigma scarab. And I think that's to strength bug him too. So he actually gets a little bit more desync. He's got the nature's piece for the Oak Sage charges. Very nice gear here. Yeah, and he did make some alterations of his charms in his inventory. Very clutch call. That's a, you know, he he does have a, an arsenal of different items in his stash. And we saw him switch to that, uh, you know, switch around those charms, which I think was a good call. Um, you know, I think I think he, he made some good calls in there. Made the best ones that he could have. And wow, what a fight, man. Uh, so, by the way, we're tuning into Max's stream. Max, if you want to show off your gear, we're looking at your guy right now. We're, we're curious to see what this uh, what this kicks in is wearing. So he's got the 08 Valk. He's got Chaos Fury. He's got a 218 with a res amulet. He's got some perfect shadow dancers. So that is a Fury. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. Yeah, those are just uh, those are very nice bases for uh, for Fury and Chaos there. Yeah, and that's the pre buff that he was talking about from the from the cube. If you're wondering why Max saves and exits there, so uh, you know, I I found out thanks to his explanation, you can only recast Venom when you when it runs out when the duration runs out. So whereas he has that that uh, bow pre buff, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, cube pre buff. He he wants to have that last as long as possible in the duel. So that's why he's doing that. He has some really nice pre-buff claws for it. And here we go, round one. So we've got Duke versus Shirley Sirius. So the advantage in this matchup goes to the Druid. What he's going to do, what you're going to see Duke do here is keep these pets up and try to telly stomp Shirley Sirius. And Shirley Sirius is just going to try to keep his bone armor up so that he can absorb at least some of the impact from those NATOs. And you're going to see him try to keep his distance. You may see him be uh, use spear a lot to cut through those pets. And a very nice telly stomp there from Duke. And it is all over for round one. And here we go, round two. And surely Sirius was seeing some ping issues here. So we might see him try to keep the distance. And we might see Duke try to really close it quickly here. Just hope to catch Shirley Sirius in a bad spot. Shirley Sirius taking a little bit of damage early. But staying out of the way mostly of these stomps. He's going to have to really work on, uh, you know, just aiming that, that bone spear right in the right spot. It cuts through all of those pets. Duke is staying out of the way of uh, significant damage here so far. Oh, nice hits from Shirley Sirius. And takes Duke to about half life. Can he fight through the 1500 ping? You're doing it for laggers everywhere, Shirley Sirius. For laggers everywhere. Oh, 
Oh, and there it is, a big stomp. And it is all over. Duke gets the stomp that he needs, cuts through that bone armor, and is able to finish. Here we go. Round three. I think Duke confused me for, for surely serious there for a second. Maybe. That or he had a nice name lock going. Oh, good hit from Shirley Sirius. And he stayed out of the way of significant damage so far, but Duke gets a nice chain lock and is able to finish from afar with that very nice long range telly stomp. Good duel. And Duke, what are you rocking on this druid that, uh, that you just put back together? Just curious, man. What is this guy wearing? So we've got the Hodo, we've got the F-Trex, Trangle's Claws, a very nice stat, life, cast rate, and cold res ring. Oh, I like this, man. He's going for the max cast setup. Yep, he's got the 219 Ami. He's got max cast on this guy. I really like that. Really, really like that. Yeah, he's got the 222 open socket, and he's put two shale runes in it for the faster hit recovery. Very, very well played. GG. And here we go. Round one of this epic matchup. So we see Punch doing some early leap, and look at this, Divinity with some CT tellies, a very nicely timed whirlwind right there from Punch. He actually got in some damage. Oh, and a nice chain lock and puts Divinity down with a couple of uh, well-timed berserks there. You got a nice chain lock going, and, and it looks like uh, it looks like Divinity actually trapped himself in with that bone prison. He tried to bone prison from afar, but by the time he got around to casting it, Punch was already on top of him. So he actually trapped himself right in. That was, uh, it was very, 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 very tough. All right, these guys are ready for round two. Let's get it on. Let's check this out. Let's see how this goes. Oh man, some big hits early. And there it is, that legendary chain lock for a very fast KO from Punch. But here we go, round three, Punch versus Divinity. It's 2-0 for Punch. He's done very well so far with his barb. It's a very nice CT tallying here from Divinity. He's he's trying to keep the distance. He really needs to. But see, this is this is some next level stuff right here from uh, from Punch. He's got that Oak Sage that he's keeping up, and the reason why that's so good against the Necro is because it can actually eat some of those Bone Spirits. It can it can eat some of those Bone Spirits. But that's why you see, look at this Divinity. He ain't no he ain't no sucker. He's got that teeth going. Oh, and a very nice chain there from Punch, but Divinity escapes and manages to deal some pretty significant damage. Yeah, you see that Oak Sage can potentially eat one of those Bone Spirits, but Divinity is being very smart, keeping the teeth going always. And that's just always gonna knock down that, uh, that Oak Sage. Punch just narrowly misses a nice chain lock there. Oh, he's got he's got the name. Can he finish it? Nope. Divinity gets out of there, recognizing very quickly that he might be chain locked. Oh man, that could have been very bad for Divinity, but he managed to it manages to escape unscathed. And right now, Punch is in trouble. Punch is in trouble here. But all it takes is a couple good, well placed Zerks, well timed chain locks. And it could be over. Wow, this is a tense duel, man. And I think Divinity is cut open. He's cut open with either poison or open wounds. He's taking that consistent damage. And you see Divinity trying to keep his distance and lure Punch into some teeth here. Good strategy because he can't actually... Punch can't take more hits like that. I'd say a couple more hits from teeth and it's probably all over. 
So he's got to be very, very clutch with his uh, with his hits. But it looks like he teleported into some either invisible bone spirits or teeth. Invisible teeth were very well placed there from Divinity. That was very nicely done. I think Divinity played that very well at the end there. He recognized that he doesn't need to get overly aggressive. He doesn't need to necessarily land a direct bone spirit hit. He can finish it with teeth. And he did great there. Very well done. And here we go. Round four from these insane fighters. Looks like Punch trying to keep that Oak Sage up, trying to do that leap. And that leap is, is very powerful in PvP. It stuns your opponent from afar. Gives you just a small window of time to either get a chain lock that you're looking for, or maybe get a telly stomp in with Whirlwind. Very useful skill in PvP. Busted, busted skill. Oh, there it is. Nice, nice lock there from Punch. But Divinity gets out. Divinity's doing a great job of making Punch chase him. And Punch doing a very good job of catching up. Wow, nice aim there from that uh, from that Tele Stomp or that uh, Teleport Whirlwind. He didn't even have him name locked. It was just very, very well aimed. But Divinity quickly out of there and just getting in that ping damage. He might be trying to keep his distance for another reason now, but oh, nice name lock there from Punch. Almost had the chain. Oh, and there it is. Very, very quickly, Punch transitioned from a, from a well-placed Whirlwind right into a Berserk. And it just so happened that Divinity landed right in the wrong spot with that teleport. Just landed right at the end of Punch's Whirlwind, and Punch was ready. It's got a very nice Grief of Doom here. Ah, uh, look at this helm, dude. It's a 3020 with a shell rune in it. He's got uh, he's got the Visionary mod on it. He does have that High Lord's Enigma of Duress for that faster hit recovery. That's very important against the Necro. Trangle's Gloves. Nature's Peace for that Oak Sage. And a very decent ring there. He's got some B mana charms for an extra mana boost. 451 poison. Nice uh, 2013 barb torch and all of the rest of the charms in his inventory. Three 2020s. Oh, look at those. Look at that Warcry Club. I think that... Don't, don't undershoot that 2013 torch there. I think that was actually a pre-patch torch. So it's, uh, it might look like, oh, wow, you're a little low on that torch. It's because it's, it's pre-patch, man. There's a lot, of, a lot of benefits to that. Round one, Joby off to a nice start with some uh, some charge in here, trying to get a nice sync going on. Root wanting none of that close range combat, trying to keep his distance and make Joby run into some tornadoes. Can he do it? I'm curious if Joby used uh, the life tap setup here. It can be very good in Pally versus, uh, or, or VT versus Druid. Yeah, he did, he went with exile. Yeah, sometimes when you get, I mean, it's a rough matchup for a Paladin, but if you hit that life tap, sometimes it can save you. It doesn't always do it, uh, but, you know, sometimes it's like your only way out, man. Well, let's see, Joby just waiting for his opportunity. There it is. He gets a nice stomp, but he couldn't get the name lock. And he's using Holy Shock here, it looks like, possibly to try to get rid of some of the wolves. That's very interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. Now he's teleporting around. He's, he's trying to not to stay in one spot. Trying not to stay in one spot because he doesn't want Root to be able to time him. Know where he's at always. Oh man, nice chains here from Joby, but he can't quite get it. Oh, and there it is. Gets him puddled. He puddles Root and gets the finish. Good catch. Very good catch. Joby is ready for round two. Root's ready for round two. So we are ready for round two. Diving in. Root trying to, to uh, place some NATOs in some very strategic spots. He's You see him circling around MTL, trying to get a good angle. You notice that it, it's, it's sort of different 
when you're going up against a very skilled player with smite you'll notice root isn't in a in a hurry to telly stomp joby here at all he's not trying to do that usually you'll see that but you know verse in a druid versus pally matchup is that telly stomp Root's only going to do it if the opportunity presents itself. And bam, nice hits from Smite there by Joby. Root is at a very low life total early, but he's on the back pedal here, and he's doing a good job of staying offensive too, throwing those NATOs out there and catching Joby with one of them. Joby gets that life tap. He does not want Root to recast those pets. It looks like Root might be doing that right now. Recasting those pets to clean off that life tap aura. Root coming in. A fresh set of pets. Fresh set of Oak Sage. Nice sink there from Joby. A very good attempt at a stomp there. Just misses it. Gets the name. Following him around with a stomp. And a good CT Telly escape there from Root. Oh, man. Very close. Very close name lock. Yeah, Root is doing a very good job of CT telling out of those of those chain locks. That's something that, uh, you know, Joby is a very nasty chain locker. And Root knows that. Root has seen Joby's battles. He's seen what MTL can do. He knows that when he gets in close and he throws those NATOs, he's got to quickly break that chain lock or it could be over very quickly very nicely done there very well placed tornadoes it, it didn't connect clean there but it, don't you know don't let it take away from how well it was placed very nicely done with these escapes and the thing about using exile here too is joby is giving up cast rate He's, he's giving up that break point of cast rate, so he doesn't telly fast enough to catch Root when he CT tellies out of these locks. So he's really got to time himself here. That's the, that's the drawback to using, you know, the big drawback to using that uh, Exile over Spirit. Oh, and a nice hit there from Root. Narrowly escaping death. Good job to the fighters tonight. Those mana pots look so tempting in the more. Look at them. They look so tempting. Appreciate the uh, appreciate fighters holding off. And a nice lock there from Joby. But he can't close it out. Ooh, very nice. A good hit from Root. And a good CT telly out of there. Joby putting on the cleansing to get rid of that poison. Oh, big hits! Nicely done from Joby. What a comeback. That duel was tight the whole time. I say a comeback, but holy shit, he had, a, he had an advantage early. He got some very, very early damage in there. And it looked like he could have finished. Root was probably at one, one life or close to it that whole duel. But he was doing a hell of a job at actually working Joby down with those very well-timed tornadoes. 48 FCR. You're right. Yep. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, Joby. I'd like to know that I'm not just making shit up over here and talking out my ass. Let's do this. Very nicely done from Joby. It was a very, very close round uh, in, in our last round here. And oh, a nice puddle. Nice puddle there, but a very good escape from Root. I can't believe he just got out of that. I mean, and whenever you escape a situation like that as a Druid in this matchup, you've essentially given yourself a whole nother shot at winning the duel. Uh, he's essentially, he's given himself a, this is a whole nother duel now. It's a round within a round. What an escape. <laughs> and Joby was stunting. He says, he says, me neither, mid-duel. Very entertaining guy to watch. I freaking love this guy. Stunting, dude. Just stunting. Oh, very 
very well placed NATO is there. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to blow the cover there. I saw what Joby was trying to do, and I didn't want to spoil the surprise because that would have been really bad. But he actually had Root chain locked, and he didn't want Root to know that he had him chain locked. And I think that was really that was really cool. You saw Root teleporting around him in a circle. That's usually indicative that the druid doesn't think you have them chain locked. And Joby knew that. So he was waiting for his opportunity, waiting to try to predict his pattern there and get in. He didn't want Root to know that he was that he had him chain locked. And here we go. Round four. It is 2-1 in favor of Joby right now. Yeah, I think we're going to see a different style, or I should say a different result of certain things in this duel. Oh, here it is. A nice charge down from Joby. A nice charge down from Joby, and it is all over. So what Joby did there is you saw him for that last duel switch back to spirit. There is something to be said for that. Uh, I think that that's a big statement right there. He's really preferring that cast rate over the chance to cast life tap. I, I can really respect that decision. Very nice Grief of Doom there. And he's got a uh, sick Paladin Diadem with two bears in it for the damage reduction. That legendary 220 amulet. Some Water Walks. He's got a perfect Raven. Perfect Verdungos. Very nice. Nice, uh, nice caster ring there too. Jeez. And sick gloves. Obviously a sick inventory. Would you expect anything less? GG. That was awesome, man. All right, here we go. Priest versus Karn. I'm so pumped to see Karn make an appearance in DFC Season 2. This guy's a legendary Necro right here. Legendary. Oh, and he's keeping that pressure on Priest. Not taking much damage. Looks like he might have a... Does he have a max block set up on here? It's hard to tell. Priest taking some damage early. Yeah, it looks like Spirit Sword, which would be indicative of him having a max block setup. It would be indicative of a max block setup. Oh, very nice toe-to-toe -to -toe there from TFC and Carnegie. Look at this. Karn just makes it look easy on a Necro. Look at that movement. Some nice chain locking there too. And really putting Priest in a, in a tough spot. Yeah, Shirley really Serious, using the Spirit Sword there replenishes that uh, that faster hit recovery. Because you lose that if you switch to SS. You lose that beautiful 55 FHR from Spirit. And it's really hard to make that back up on a Necro. But uh, he is using that Spirit Crystal Sword by the looks just to make up for that. And yeah, Carnegie is in a lot of trouble here. He's very low on life. But the good thing is, is he's not poisoned or, or like to the point where his life total is so low that he's going to get taken out by like, you know, the, the elemental damage that might be coming from something on priests, you know, through the bone armor. Because that can definitely happen. Like, if, you know, if he gets hit with a jab or something. He's not, I don't think he's that low yet. Could be pretty close. TFC. See, TFC, when he's, in a, when he's in a pinch, man, he starts playing a lot smarter, too. And I think he's starting to figure out Carnegie. Might have happened a little late in round one here, but he's going to remember this shit for round two. Oh, and a nice strafe there from TFC. Hoping to dodge that bone spirit by the looks. TFC trying to finish while he notices TFC's battle orders is gone. Trying to get that damage in. He knows this damage is coming at a premium here. 
TFC escaping very well. Unscathed there from that exchange. But how long will it last? Carnegie taking a little bit more damage. He's got to be careful of that poison jab because that could put him in a dangerous, dangerous life total. TFC taking a bit more damage. Carnegie trying to finish. Nice movement there from Priest right in between those bone spears. He's stopping, pausing. It reminds me of a boxing match where your opponent swings and they just barely miss, but it gives you the perfect window to counterattack. And I think that's what he's, uh, you know, that's what Priest was very, very good at right there. Carnegie might be in trouble. No, he's still, he's still at a pretty healthy life total. Not low enough, I don't think, to get clocked by a, by a lightning bolt. Carnegie recasting up here. He might be out of mana. Yeah, he might be out of mana in this duel. Yeah, you see him running around. He's, he's keeping the aggression off. He's out of mana. Trying to be very conservative with his mana. And that, that only favors Priest at this point. I think Carnegie kind of, he blew through his mana very quickly trying to finish. And he couldn't quite get it. And that's the payoff. That's the payoff for being able to survive those vicious attacks. Is your opponent could completely blow their wad. Like, it, it could completely, it could be over. Carnegie, gotta engage. No mana. Yeah, he is he's completely he is completely useless with no mana here. He's in a lot of trouble. Hoping for that big hit. Oh, there it is from Priest. Very nicely done. And here we go, round two. I think Carnegie is gonna be a bit more conservative with his mana here. And he's keeping that Oak Sage up. It's going to be very good for at least blocking some shots from Priest. But the drawback to keeping your distance like that is you're going to get that Oak Sage taken out by those uh, by that multi-shot from Priest. Priest unscathed so far. Carnegie is poisoned. He's on a clock. What happened? <laughs> what happened? What just happened? <laughs> Trying to look back in the chat. I saw some, uh, I saw Priest say something there. Wondering if I missed something. Yeah, that's, that's still the case, sure, I'm sure, but both players would have to agree to a, a mana pool wave. Which is... Oh, man, there it is. Carnegie finishes. GG. And here we go, round three. Priest versus Karn. Oh, big hits early from Carnegie. Carnegie narrowly escaping that poison jab, and he gets nailed with one right as I say that. Looks like he does have some good uh, either Poison Resist or PLR. Because he doesn't seem to be taking a ton of damage. Oh, and he's doing some nice damage to TFC. And there it is. Wow, very nicely done. That was actually impressive. He just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Priest. He just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Priest on a Necro. Holy shit. Here we go. Round four. Priest keeping his distance, Karn keeping his distance, trying to trying to place some bone spirits very strategically. All of them have missed TFC Priest. Ah, Karn setting up some bone walls. Interesting. Interesting. Trying to cut off the angles of Priest. You saw him getting in front of Priest there and laying out some bone walls. That was a next. That was like 
fighting with your next to next move in play. Just trying to set up the terrain to trap Priest. Carnegie re-battle ordering. And engaging with Priest. Throwing those teeth. That's a, that's a new one. We haven't seen that in a Necro versus Zahn matchup tonight. Teleporting far away to cast Golem and Bone Armor. Carnegie tapped with that poison. I'm, I'm wondering how effective that's going to be, that poison. Oh, man. Carnegie taking some more hits. Priest has to avoid this pressure from Karn. He's doing a great job of it. Oh, and Carnegie has shaken the poison. It didn't do a significant amount of damage. Oh, man. Karn is getting the upper hand here. Priest trying to create that distance. Karn having none of it. Oh, and Priest is in trouble. Karn using the teeth. And TFC trying to let that poison do some work. But he is in a lot of trouble. Oh, nice hits there from TFC Priest. But it's not quite enough. And Carnegie finishes. Very nicely done, though. That was impressive from Karn. So that's how a Necro does it right there. That's how a Necro does it. We got to take some notes. Oh, look at these. Cruel Javs over the Titans. Very nice. So he's using that more for the physical damage and IAS. Wow. Fort at Chains. Ah, and he's got that Nature's Peace for the Oak Sage. Maybe that was him with the Oak Sage up there in the duels. Grand Matron Bow Faith. The 120, 45, 30. Artisan's TR of Speed. Yeah, I like that for open wounds, too. Cutting your opponent open there through that bone armor is super important. So that's his strategy there. I like those gloves, too. Very nice heavy bracers. Yeah, open wounds, poison, really trying to wear his opponent down through that bone armor, knowing that that's going to be a pretty significant source of damage absorb. GG. Appreciate you showing off your gear there, Priest. That was awesome.